Before we start learning specifically about Git, let's take a look at what source control is, how many traditional centralized source control systems work, and how Git is different. Source control is something that comes up whenever you have a team of developers working together. Occasionally, one developer may use source control and often will find source control useful, but source control becomes essential when you have at least two people working together on a project. Modern development frameworks and languages often require many files to be created, shared, and modified over the course of time. If you're working on a web project, you're familiar with HTML files that need to be modified, updated, and published to web servers. And when working on plain text files such as HTML, when two people make changes to the same file, the status of that file and how it's changed over time can be confusing unless there is some form of management software in the middle showing you the history of the project, what lines in the software have changed, and what the very latest revision is that can be deployed to production systems. Traditionally, when a team of developers has worked together, a source control system has been installed that is a centralized source control system. What we mean by a centralized source control system is a client server type of system where a server holds the source code repository that contains the project history, the revisions of the project, how it's changed over time, and the history of each individual file. When interacting with that source code system, developers will check out a working copy based on any one of those criteria, be it the latest working copy or a specific point in history. What the developer is working on is simply a set of files that can be communicated to the server to find out history and more status about the project before being checked in and shared. The disadvantage to systems like this, and occasionally the advantage of systems like this, is that all of the project history, the revisions and file history are kept on that centralized server. Any branches or changes to that repository happen at the server level to be shared with all developers who are using working copies that may just be a simple part of that repository. This can cause some issues with visibility into the project if things get complicated or branches start to become large. Branches can be expensive, they can be heavy, and they can be difficult to maintain. Developers usually don't have that full history and full visibility into the history and the status of all of the source code repository while working. Git is a little bit different in that fashion. Rather than having a centralized location for history, revisions, and the state of the project, when working with Git, an entire clone of a software repository is made from either a centralized location or perhaps even a Git repository hosted by a single developer or in a single location. A clone of a project is the complete and full history of that project. When you clone a Git project, you get the entire commit history of the project, with all of the information about those commits, along with the ability to share branches and the ability to create and make local modifications without impacting upstream users or other developers. So when using Git, you'll note that most of the operations that happen on a day-to-day -day basis happen locally against a cloned repository. Sharing source code is a process of taking changes made to local repositories and bringing those changes in sync with each other or in sync with a shared master repository that by convention is decided as the master repository of the project. Collaboration with developers can also be a little bit easier because developers can work on a local repository and then later on when they have an internet connection or a better internet connection, they can bring those repositories in sync when they're ready to promote changes or share changes with other developers.